Okay, I think we're live and we're good to get started. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome you all to the closing session of this year's ACT Virtual Festival of Treasury Transformation. My name is Caroline Korthas and I work at MEFG, a global Japanese bank. I'm a permanent member of the corporate banking team where I focus on investment grade and crossover credits with a particular focus on general industries and transportation. Within corporate banking, we are able to assist corporate treasuries with a variety of financial matters that help our clients run their operations as smoothly and successfully as possible. I'm also a member of the ACT Future Leaders and Treasury Committee, which I joined a few months ago. And today it is my pleasure to moderate this incredible panel around shaping the next generation treasury teams. As treasurer's roles continue evolving, it appears that more people are looking for young talent with cross-functional skills, including technological, operational, and soft skills. Just to let you know, today's session will specifically focus on the role that technology plays in shaping the next generation of treasury teams. The session will be structured in two parts, the first being a 30-minute discussion with the panelists on several questions that I will be asking them, and the second being a 15-minute Q&A-based discussion. So please do feel free to submit any questions that you may have on the topic, and I will list them afterwards. I don't doubt that today's panelists will spark an interesting and eye-opening discussion. So without further ado, I will ask each panelist to quickly introduce themselves and also provide a brief overview of the following three questions, if applicable. What does your treasury team look like today? How do you expect this to change going forward? And what role does technology play in your team? Is it a driver or perhaps a facilitator? So perhaps James, if I can ask um, for you to start and then we will pass it on to Alison and then Hugh. Hi, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Caroline, appreciate that. So like Caroline, I'm also a member of the Future Leader in Treasuries uh, group, but I am based in Dubai. So I look after the Middle East uh, with Roshan Tolkien's another group treasurer out here. So my name is James. I'm the assistant treasurer at Shalhoub Group. I've been out here in Dubai for about two years, having previously worked in London, with GSK, Deloitte, and a number of other companies too. Um, most of you probably don't know who Shalhoub are. Um, we are the leading luxury retailer in the Middle East. We have over 800 stores across Dubai, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, and a number of other countries too. Um, we have about just over 10,000 employees currently. Uh, in terms of the brands, you probably recognize those more than our names. So we have brands such as Louis Vuitton, Sephora, Paul Smith, and one called Christoffel. I'm not sure if many will know that one, but it's a, a very big and hist historical brand uh, who creates silver-based products and from France. Okay, um, and in Treasury, um, it's been a very sort of interesting couple, couple of years since I've joined. So we started with around sort of eight or nine people in the team, and we're now currently at 10. Uh, we have quite a, a mix of people in, the, in that team. So we have uh, a lot of people who have a lot of treasure experience and have grown up either externally and brought, being brought in for his, uh, expertise like myself and our group treasurer also called James. Uh, also have, or have moved within Shalhoub and been promoted within Shalhoub and have been taught treasury and have really developed, developed into experts in that field. Uh, we also have a lot of people who have come more recently. So either quite young in their career or from other fields, whether it be banking, or, or uh, also from digital payments uh, to join the team and to bring a real kind of breadth of, of skills, which we'll talk about more about later. And we're planning to invest probably between three to four roles next year, additionally, across the, across the team. Um, and just one thing, obviously, Caroline, the focus here is around technology. And whilst we accept that, and we accept that data and te uh, technology are key to facilitate the future of how we grow and succeed, for me, it's really important to recognize the integral role actually our people will play in that journey and something we'll talk about more th throughout this session, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. So perhaps we can pass it on to, to Alison. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alison Stevens, and I'm group treasurer of Thames Water, which is the lar largest UK water uh, company. And um, I've worked at Thames Water for two years, coming up to two years, and prior to that, I um, had uh, roles in the insurance sector and also previously in utilities for the Thames Water role as well. Um, the treasury team at Thames Water, considering the size of the business, is relatively small, with um, approximately 10 of us in the team, and that covers cash operations, funding, 
back to markets, bank relationships, risk management, and treasury accounting. So we cover all of that in that with that small team. And um, I've got a couple of people in the team that have got fairly long-standing uh, careers in treasury, whereas um, quite a number of the team are relatively new to treasury. And um, we we're not necessarily expecting um, technology to have transformational impact on the team, but it is something that we think we could make better use of and we would like to um, improve uh, the level of automation in our processes and procedures. And um, so it is an area of focus for the future for ourselves. Perfect, thank you. Um, and last but definitely not least, Hui. Thanks a lot, uh, Caroline. And, uh... Uh, hello everyone. It's a real pleasure to be uh, to be with you, and thanks to ACT for the uh, for the invitation. So my name is Hui. I am co-founder of CFT. We're one of the largest global platforms in the education for fintech and digital finance. Uh, before that, I used to be in banking. So I used to run groups at uh, City, RBS, and Subgen. Uh, and before that, I wasn't born as a banker. Actually, I started as an as an entrepreneur. Uh, I was CEO of a tech startup in the US. I am not a treasurer, uh, unfortunately, but I've had the chance to work with a lot of treasurers. Uh, when, I use, uh, when I used to be at Citi and, uh, and RBS, one of my roles was to work with the treasury functions of our banks, so Citi or RBS, but also other banks, uh, much more on the uh, optimization side uh, as well as, uh, as A&M. Uh, so I can't really say in terms of my treasury team because I don't have a treasury team. We do work with a lot of treasury teams, however, and a lot of treasurers. Uh, and, uh, and we see a, a lot of different uh, ways that they use technology. And I would say for some of them, it's, uh, uh, let's call that quite incremental, where they use technology on top of, of what they do. And it's much more about uh, enhancing and optimizing some of their existing processes, where some others uh, are much more uh, transformational, let's say, uh, and use much more new tools uh, related to data or artificial intelligence, for example. Uh, I think in terms of the teams and going back to what James said, uh, I, I think we see really two different um, big trends. One of them, which is about uh, giving more technology knowledge to the existing team, but also hiring other types of profiles where we're starting to see also more tech profiles getting some of, uh, in some of the treasury teams. Uh, so uh, my view would be much more from, I would say, you know, uh, as an outsider, uh, as a, from the treasury side. Uh, but hopefully I'll give you some, uh, some good you know, insights about that. Perfect. Thank you all for, for the introduction. Um, I think it's very helpful just to, to set the scene a little bit before we go into the main um, discussion questions. So perhaps we, have, perhaps we can start off with, with the following question. How do you think COVID-19 has impacted the te technology transformation in your treasury team or outside of your treasury team? And is there an interesting technology related project that you're working on at the moment? So maybe perhaps we can start with, with Alison on this one. Yeah, well, that's fine. And hopefully you can hear me um, better with the headphones on. Um, so um, the impact of COVID on the treasury was that we had to start working from home. So it really did test uh, whether we could use um, all of the technology um, that we'd been using in the office, but successfully from home. And um, that fortunately proved to be the case. And um, I would say it hasn't uh, particularly transformed anything other than we're making much more use of um, the online systems than we were before. It hasn't, hasn't had any other major transformational effects regards treasury. We're obviously using a lot less paper and uh, getting used to um, doing all of our processes and procedures electronically, including electronic signature of documents and electronic approvals. Um, but uh, aside from that, I don't think um, COVID has had a, a major impact on, on how we do things in, in the treasury. Perfect. And is there potentially a, a, an interesting project that you've been working on within the team? Um, one thing that we are looking at doing um, is regards our derivatives portfolio um, and um, the valuation methodology for the derivatives. And um, we've been testing out 
the uh, a, a new methodology which is available on we're actually looking at Bloomberg uh, for that which can take into account um, the netting across um, per ISDA on a per ISDA basis and and valuing trades probably more accurately than our on our treasury system can at the moment um, and then we'll be looking to try and integrate the results of that into our other systems um, but yeah that's a work in progress that's great thank you for that um, perhaps pass it on to to Hunam. Yeah, I, I think in in general, and uh, uh, Alison and James you know, would have you know, much more uh, in terms of you know, what is really happening. Um, I think the biggest trend that we've seen is just the you know, digitalization in general. And uh, I think you know, for us you know, to have this call you know, on a Zoom and it's just a normal you know, business as usual, I think that that has just really transformed the way we work. And I think that's a, that's a very, very good starting point. Uh, in terms of digitalization, I like to say that COVID has basically accelerated digitalization by let's say a factor of five to 10 times. Uh, if we just look at, for example, the adoption of e-commerce, uh, then basically in, in a year, basically, we gained you know, 10 years of e-commerce adoption. So that has really transformed the, the way that we use digital. And I think it's all normal uh, now. Uh, I would say on the treasury side, where we see the most is a first uh, digital payment in general. And uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, the adoption of new ways of you know, paying you know, digitally. Uh, which is you no know, more options also for consumers to pay digital, uh, digitally has been one of the big trends. Uh, and the other big trend that we have seen is uh, integration of, uh, of systems uh, where uh, there's much more you know, straight through processing than before, much less manual work that we see between different systems, more uh, automation through automation. Oops. Uh, are you okay, uh, Karin? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> and, uh, and so that, that would be, I think, you know, the main trends that, that we see. Uh, we can push it a bit further, and I don't know if it's the use cases that, that you see, but uh, things like cryptocurrencies are also not necessarily you know, related to COVID, but uh, we're seeing you know, more and more uh, companies starting to accept uh, cryptocurrencies that, of course, you know, has a lot of impact, not just in terms of how do you, you know, accept cryptocurrencies, but how do you manage the risk, what do you do with that? So slightly different kind of uh, ALM. Very insightful. Um, and, and James, what about on, on your side? Yeah, no, th th thank you. And I think with Hui, he said two big things. He said around digital payments and sort of consolidation of your systems. So we both, we experienced both of those. It's actually been a very interesting, busy two years. It's not the two years I planned to ha have when I moved out to Dubai, but it's, it's been excellent. And actually there's been a lot of silver linings have come for us in treasury for, from the pandemic. So there's two, the two main areas. First of all, uh, is around e-commerce. So obviously as a retailer, we rely quite heavily on our stores and because it's luxury, it tends to be people prefer going to the store. They get a personal service, the experience, as well as buying the product as well, which you just don't get as much from on, online retail. Uh, so we had, at the start of COVID, we had five websites up and live and running. Um, and by the end of 2020, we had around 55. So we basically, reached our five-year target in less, in less than a year for, for e-commerce. So a lot of that took away, took, sorry, reduced the deficit from the sales for stores, but it wasn't quite up to the, up to the level of, of our stores and kind of, because we didn't have the infrastructure in place. We didn't have the kind of people used to it. So there's a lot of learnings from that, but we were able to kind of really kind of uh, respond to the, to the uh, pandemic with that basis. Uh, what that meant from our, from our team is, we didn't really have a digital payments team to Huawei's point either. Uh, so we now have a digital payments team on Treasury, which, which we've created. So they're primarily focused around e-commerce. Uh, so that's where, where it was needed. So building websites, uh, making sure the payment infrastructure in place, the acquirers, the gateways, et cetera, working with our banks to make sure that they're working. And across this region, it's all quite segmented. So there's lots of different providers and different markets. So that's been a real big change. Uh, we have now three people in that team and we plan to have four uh, stroke five by the end of next year. So it's quite a growing area. Uh, a, lot come, a lot's come with it. And we're looking to now move away from building to kind of the more sustainable and kind of what next. So we built it. Is it right fit for purpose? Does it meet with our kind of bigger agenda within Shell Hoob? Or what, what do we need to do to kind of really kind of get that seamless, I hate to say, but omni-channel sales process that we're looking for where we have our stores, we have e-commerce, 
and but at the moment they're quite separate. So how do we bring them together? So the customer journey is, is very seamless. So that, that's something we're working on. So within the digital payments team also, we'll be taking under store POSs and also everything in between. So what's out selling? Um, just a couple of mentions also around into the other digital payment areas. So we're actually, I've actually been on calls this week with a payment provider for crypto. So we have no interest in the volatility of crypto. I, I, don't, I don't want to lose my job if, if Bitcoin tanks tomorrow. So obviously we just want the, the uh, fiat currency or the US dollars or local currency delivered to us. So we're working with a provider right now to do a, a pilot to see how that would work. And that will be in one of our smaller retailers, but also one of our high-end uh, hypercar <laughs> retailers. So a bit of extremes there and different money uh, values involved. So really interesting, a, a massive change for us. Uh, so that's the more unusual, uh, kind of the more core treasury uh, change that's been impacted from COVID is around our actual basic core treasury activities. And we are a year into now a treasury transformation project. We had initially proposed this to our leadership at the end of 2019. And I think the response was very polite. They said, it's great, it looks amazing, but you guys are doing well. We don't need to do anything more. We want to, we want to focus on fires elsewhere. So they said, no, fair enough. But then obviously COVID hit. Our store was shut and focus on cash came in. We had no cash flow forecasting. We had sort of like segmented visibility of cash, sort of a small, mostly centralized, but partially decentralized. So many nights of sort of sleepless nights of sewing together Excel spreadsheets, trying to understand cash flow for the next six, 12 months, uh, with, the, with the CFO saying, is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? And at ATM, yes, it's ready. Uh, they kind of realized that we need something a bit more <laughs> uh, sustainable, a bit more robust uh, for the group. So on, on the back of that and also just uh, focus on funding and just generally kind of having more visibility of what we're doing and kind of realizing that actually yeah, there's more need in the treasury space. We got our treasury transformation project approved at the end of last year. So it's actually got 15 different projects. One of those being setting up a digital payments team, but also includes setting up a new treasury entity in Abu Dhabi Global Markets. So it's a financial free zone here in the UAE. It involves uh, selection and implementation of a new TMS, which we are close to finishing first the first phase of looking at the way we do FX, cash management, accounting, uh, the whole piece. Uh, one element of that as well also is around integration. Before our current system, that was fit for purpose seven years ago, is not fit for purpose now, but also it wasn't connected to our ERP and the rest of our infrastructure and our data ecosystem within Shell Hoop. So one of the key requirements of this solution now, whether it was an upgraded or a new one, was we must connect it to all of our systems so they speak to each other. So that's happening uh, and also, a lot more work around what the people changes are. So what is the impact of all of these changes, all the processes, the systems, procedures, everything changing uh, on the people. So for some people, it means actually they have more to do. Some people it means, well, actually my job took an hour, now it takes one minute. What do I have more time to do? And it's, and it's refocusing people from turning the wheel to actually looking at the value add, looking at more the analysis side of things. And this is where, as I mentioned briefly earlier, data comes into it. So. Yeah, it's, a, it's been a really interesting couple of, couple of years for us uh, and very deep into the transformation project now that we phase two, three, four, five going through next year and years beyond, including in-house bank, Pobo, Robo, et cetera. All, all the, all the sing, all singing and dancing treasury uh, things you can think of, but we've, we've come a long way. And just by centralizing all of our, our data and connecting our systems, actually we, we've had a lot of uh, benefits already, which is re really good to see. Um, and yeah. I think overall it's just definitely been a real silver lining to the pandemic for Treasury. Thank you, James. I always think it's very interesting to hear how different teams of different sizes and different sectors and different countries are sort of exper experiencing this transformation um, during COVID and, and also post COVID. Um, so, so thank you all for that. Um, before I move on to the next question, perhaps I'll just give a quick reminder um, to drop in any questions that you may have for, for the Q&A. Um, so please do submit them if you have any. Um, so just as a next question, currently most treasury professionals have a finance and accounting background. Do you perhaps think that going forward this might change? And um, what is your opinion on whether treasury should be providing additional training? Um, so maybe Alison, back to you. Uh, yeah, um, well, I think um, you're right that uh, Treasury teams are pr primarily people that started their career in finance and accounting. But I think you also do get within Treasury people that have come from other 
um, areas in their maybe in their initial career or in their um, studies. So um, I have certainly met engineers, computer scientists, mathematicians uh, that have come into Treasury. So anybody who can think logically um, and likes numbers would suit a, a career in Treasury, but obviously they would have to also enjoy finance, um, although they may not have necessarily studied that or, or, or become an accountant, for example, it's not, not necessary for Treasury, but um, it is certainly worthwhile if you are in Treasury, getting some qualifica professional qualifications, obviously the ACT um, have got some um, well-regarded qualifications, which I certainly would encourage um, teams, uh, any, any people that um, are joining Treasury from other, other avenues um, do take a look at. Um, regarding the technology side of things, um, there's, there's almost no office-based role now where you, you um, wouldn't have interface with technology. So it is important for anyone working in Treasury to be comfortable working with technology and systems. Um, I, I mean, in going back a, a number of years, I have actually worked in treasuries that had a dedicated IT person solely working on treasury and treasury systems within the team. That seems that uh, in recent years that hasn't happened, but you, you can get people with sort of IT type backgrounds working within the treasury team if, if there are a lot of systems uh, aspects to it. Um, but I think that um, most systems that would be used in a treasury team would be you would hope built to be relatively user friendly or or um with support from the system provider somebody with sort of logical background and comfortable with um treasury systems and processes would be able to work out how to use um a system in in treasury it, but it i'm sure it does partly depend on, on which sector you're in as well and it, it precisely what type of treasury um, a, a specific company has and what they're doing. Thank you. Um, perhaps, perhaps James, um, what are, what's your opinion on this? Yeah, I think it's really interesting. And, and yeah, as has a really great point there around sort of historically, there's people from all sorts of fields, all sorts of backgrounds. Um, and I completely agree with that. The, the tech one was interesting. So particularly the bigger teams, I've seen sort of embedded tech teams or maybe not embedded, but specific to treasury just because of the, the high risk nature of the treasury system going wrong and a $10 million payment going out the door without kind of controls in place. Uh, fraudulently, you need to make sure you have the tech teams in place to kind of control that, but also to keep your systems up and running. So I, I, do, I do see that as quite commonplace, uh, whether embedded or kind of uh, within the tech area itself. Um, but on, on the point around kind of people from different backgrounds, so bankers or engineers, mathematicians, I think, again, I agree in terms of the skill set. So problem solvers, people that can think, people that are reasonably able to adapt to different situations, very important in Treasury. But also, somewhat more than that, as a kind of a general character, I, I see more people who have, say, a data background, not just coming into Treasury and becoming treasurers, actually bringing in their expertise as, as data and treasury learning from it. So we have uh, well, a, very, a junior uh, per, member of the team who joined us a, just over a year ago now. And she's teaching me all about machine learning, AI, and especially good data practices. She's not she's no tre treasury expert and she's becoming one by osmosis, but she's bringing a lot of actual, actual value to us. So as we're going through our transformation journey, and we're building the system, we're obviously making sure we have very robust data controls and our core data is there. So we're getting the big data picture, but then it's a case of, so what, what, what now, what do we do with this data? How do we actually use this to kind of create value for treasury in the wider group? So whether that's in cash flow forecasting, whether that's in, in a sort of interest rate risk management, uh, FX analysis, even bank fee analysis. So we're doing a lot of work with her in connection with our data team in Shalhu to get visibility of that data so that we can actually connect and make much more uh, assumptions and kind of uh, decisions based on it as well. So I've seen a lot of places where they've had great data and a lot of it's just redundant, they don't really use it. So so for us, it's a case of like, yes, we have the data now and I think it's across, it's, it's accurate and it's in the right place and it's and it's clean and robust, but then so what, what, what are we gonna do going forward? So I think that's a, a big role that's gonna kind of be coming 
uh, into Treasury and we have more people, more data analysts, more data scientists coming in. Um, we also, in our team, we have next banker, but banking in terms of uh, risk management. So they come in for the analysis side again to kind of help, help with that process. And we also have uh, another person in the team who is uh, sort of fresh out of university, but studying towards their CFA. So the, the, uh, kind of the, the other, other side of kind of the analytical side again, but it's, uh, it's a, a really interesting mix of who's coming in. I would say, I think less accountants. I, th I, th I think we always need, need a space for accountants and also you need a space for, for bankers and in terms of the skill sets of being able to kind of sell, et cetera, depending where they are in the bank. So always, always useful uh, to know in treasury. But for, for me, that kind of data and also that tech focus is, is going to be kind of really prevalent and they're going to teach the treasurers how to kind of really be better at what we do. Um, but also just to echo what Alison said, there's no substitute for being a treasurer and completing your, your, your treasury studies. So whether it's the ACT, MCT or whatever, whatever you uh, are doing, I, I think that that's always really uh, complementary to, to on the ground learning. And my advice would be to kind of get that underway and get it done as soon as possible. Get it so you understand the technical and then you have to see it in reality. That's true. I would definitely agree with that, that it still does. I mean, it will forever remain sort of the core um, of, of the treasury function. Um, and, and Hoy, what about yourself? So it's a topic where I have very strong views on. Uh, have, you know, I have you know, very strong views. I even you know, created a company for that. And, uh, and, and just to give you the background. Um, so I think it was like six or seven years ago when I was uh, still at, at City. Uh, and uh, I met uh, Peter Tufano. Uh, he was at that time the dean of uh, Oxford State Business School. And I told him, the people you sent to us, you know, those MBAs, they were trained and they got the same education as you know, 20 years ago. They don't understand the world of finance today. And for me, the world of finance today has a very, very strong technology component. Uh, and she said, uh, no, why don't you do something about it? And that's when I joined uh, Oxford and I started all the first no fintech lectures, electives, etc. Uh, and the Oxford fintech course, which you might have heard of, because that became the first online course of Oxford, uh, actually. And after that, I left City and I uh, I started CFT on basically the same basis, which is that I fundamentally believe that you cannot be in financial services today without a strong understanding of technology. And uh, in terms of my background, I was in finance for a long time, for uh, more than a decade. My background is uh, engineering, uh, actually. Uh, and uh, I agree with uh, both of you that having a good understanding of your sector is really key. You cannot be in treasury without understanding what is a treasury function and what you have to do, of course. But I think on top of that, having a clear understanding of technology is key in the 21st century. Because technology progresses so quickly and is being used everywhere that it's almost impossible, I think, to progress in your career without understanding what is happening. Uh, and there are really two reasons for this. The first one is that all those projects that, for example, you know, James was talking about, but which are happening everywhere, at the end of the day, you want to be part of those projects. You don't want to be a spectator and seeing you know, all of those you know, applications coming in and new sectors, et cetera. So uh, you want to be part of those projects. But the second reason also is that, for example, we are seeing more and more data scientists, technologists, you not know, getting into this. But I always say that, for example, artificial intelligence is too important to be left to data scientists. So data scientists, of course, extremely important, but at the end of the day, you need people who have a real understanding of the business, a real understanding of you know, all those links between you know, financial flows and regulation and compliance, and who have their own point of view to be able to contribute to the discussion. Because otherwise, the risk that we'll have is that we'll have people on the technology who will be developing things. We'll have people on, let's call that the treasury side, you know, who will be understanding what they do. And we won't have this very, very important bridge between both. And that leads to you know, all the scandals that we've seen in the past, that leads into things that don't work and we don't really understand why, and which will be a big problem when we know that technology allows for scalability. So when you start to do things which are pretty much you no. Know, all glued together, uh, and they all work without any human uh, intervention. This is where you really need to make sure that at the outset, someone has really thought properly about it. Um, so I would say having a finance or accounting background, of course, very important in treasury. Of course, some people have no other backgrounds also, but being able not to become a data scientist, but understanding technology, 
having the vocabulary, understanding that if we talk about machine learning, what does it really mean? It's not a magic box. No? Uh, machine learning is really about having a computer and algorithm which will be trained. So how do you train it? How do you make sure that your training basically uh, will not lead to bias? How do you make sure that your training will not lead to consequences that you haven't foreseen? I think you know, all of that is quite, is quite important. Thank you for that. Definitely an interesting point of view to have as, as part of the discussion. Um, just, just conscious of time, because we've got 15 minutes for, for the Q&A. But before we move on to the q and I'm just going to ask a very quick question um, to all three panelists. Um, just noting that the session title of sh is, is Shaping the Next Generation um, of Treasury Teams. Do you have any advice um, for the younger generation in terms of how they can best prepare for a career in Treasury? Um, just a quick point of advice from all three panelists, please. Perhaps um, James? Yeah, so so I, I think I think we covered it quite extensively. I think you need to be prepared to understand treasury and data and tech and follow lots of other current trends and who knows what the trend will be in five years' time when it's something else, right? So just kind of see what's out there and don't be kind of afraid. You don't have to be an expert, but just be aware of these things and don't be afraid to kind of really sort of just go, actually, what is this? Actually, does it have an application in treasury? And to kind of be be bold, I would say. Be, being bold is key. It's something that's always been important to me in my career and important treasury. So I think that's one thing. Uh, make, make sure you get your studies done. As I said it before, keep, if you get your studies done, tick that box, get it done, but also kind of use that. Um, because more and more now, when you get CVs through, everyone has a qualification. And if you don't have the ACT, sometimes HR uh, people who don't understand treasury will see there's no ACT and they won't even put you through to the treasury experts to give you a chance. So I would say that's quite important. Um, be yourself, so be authentic and do what you want to do and do it how you want to do it. Don't think do it how you think you should be done, which is, applies to any industry. And also I think the one thing which I don't see enough of is be, be a good person do, and do the right thing for you and for the company as well. So there's the whole thing about if a thousand people are going to the left and it's wrong, you should still go to the right if it's right. So try, try and follow that mantra and you'll be successful and uh, be, be inquisitive as well ask questions, try and challenge and learn as much as you can. Thank you. And, and Alison? Uh, yeah, I would agree with um, what James has just gone through. Um, I think it is key to keep abreast of changes, keep up to date with what's happening in your sector. And you can do that. I mean, the ACT provides um, resources, Treasurer Magazine, the website, events such as this. Um, if you get the chance to network with other corp corporates or other treasurers to find out what they're doing. Um, so all of that is important to make sure that you, you're keeping um, up to date with developments. Um, but there are some, some core basic skills that are still very important in treasury around accuracy, strong controls, um, and um, managing risk carefully, um, being very reliable, making sure that what needs to be done gets done. So there's some, some basic skills um, that are, are still needed in Treasury, um, as well as the, the new, the new uh, tech, tech stuff. Thank you. And uh, finally, Hoy? So I think that uh, we're, we're definitely living in a world which is changing very, very quickly. Uh, and uh, some people might be afraid. On the other hand, what I'd like to say is that it's the most exciting time to be in finance. Uh, and I think in Treasury also, because we know that a lot of things are changing. Uh, and you know, for you know, for young people, that's an amazing opportunity to be part of those uh, to be part of those changes. Um, of course, technology is the main theme, and some people might say, you know, I don't like technology or you know, I hate math, no, which is totally fine. Uh, the good news is that technology is much much more accessible. So having a strong foundation in what you do, for example, in Treasury, having your proper certification from ACT, I think this is a given. You know, it has to, you know, if you work in a sector, you need to understand that sector and have the proper qualifications. But on top of that, make sure that you upskill and have uh, you know, this ability you know, to converse with different types of people uh, from you know, your business, from technology, and make sure that you can do the bridge. Uh, I think the skills that people are really looking for at the moment are people who are not siloed and can do just one thing but are much more open and can converse uh, with you know, technology business because all projects today really require this combination of 
open my nest, but also um, uh, understanding of uh, what is behind. Thank you very much for um, for that advice from from all of you. Um, just noting that we have ten minutes now for Q and A. Um, I've received a few questions um, on on the submission box, um, and I think I'm gonna gonna just direct the first question straight back to you, Hoi, if if you don't mind. Um, a lot of the new technology solutions make it easier to perform complex tasks without necessarily understanding what goes on and what what goes on in the black box. Is there a risk that it will lead to a hollowing out of skills? So there's definitely a risk, and that's why uh, I think you know, I think that it's really important that you understand you know what's in the box. Uh, I, I think that it's both you know, impossible. It's very risky to do things you no know, without understanding you know, what is behind, especially when you talk about a treasury function, especially when you talk about uh, money, and uh, and the reality is that it's not. Of course, you don't want to become a programmer and go into the box and understand you know, all the lines of the algorithms. Uh, but it is totally possible for everyone with just uh, a good understanding of the basic technologies behind you know, the basic you know, mechanisms to understand what are the principles behind, but also to be able to ask the questions. And I think that's the most important part is really asking the questions and being able to uh, discuss with the people who developed the, the programs, for example, and understand you know, what was done, uh, what it was done, uh, under which you no know, considerations, you know, uh, if they had, we are seeing more and more machine learning, and that's why you know, people talk about black box, we're seeing more and more computer programs you know, that evolve and learn by themselves, but there's always a logic behind. So this is the logic that uh, you need to understand. So totally possible. So uh, yes, I, I agree with the point that there's more and more uh, complex programs, I would say, but the good thing is that there's more and more requirements, both from customers and also from regulators, to make sure that it's not black box, actually, and uh, we have much more this trend uh, towards transparency, uh, towards uh, explainable uh, algorithms. Understood. And I, and I guess just a quick follow-up question on that, if I may. Um, noting just the, the increased or, or the pertinence of, of technology, um, do you think going forward we'll see more more regulations in relation to this? So perhaps I can continue on uh, on that side. Um, I don't know if we'll see more regulation, but uh, very clearly regulators are extremely involved in this technological uh, progress. Uh, for example, in, in the uh, in the UK, the FCA, the Bank of England, are extremely extremely well aware of those and are part of this. Innovation. What we're seeing, however, is perhaps not on the regulation side, but much more on the supervision side, where there's this whole new trend of what we call subtech, so supervision technology, where regulators now are asking to get not uh, rooms of paper sent you know, on the, in terms of, uh, of information, but uh, getting direct access to the computer systems of, uh, of for example, you know, banks. So we're starting to see regulators much, much more involved because they're all in the same way as treasurers want to have a real-time view of, uh, of their business. Now regulators want to have a real-time view of uh, the financial system. So definitely uh, much more involvement that we've seen for the last you know, few years already from regulators. Thank you for that. Um, James and Alison, perhaps um, do you guys have a, a view on this? Um. I think Treasury will definitely be an under increased regulation in the coming years, whether it's a direct uh, correlation to the advent of more technology, I'm not sure. I think technology makes it easier for things. So whether it's just sending your your deal slips to the cloud somewhere and, and just a massive data repository in the sky that no one's ever going to look at, I'm, I'm not sure how useful it will be. Um, but the, the technology definitely facil facilitates the regulation in theory. And, and, and as I was saying about uh, using what APIs to look for regulators to look into banks. There's no reason why they can go, oh, actually, it works at banks. Let's, let's move it down on to corporates. So I think there is more regulation. There is going to be more challenge to what we do, uh, particularly if it's sort of in more challenging markets potentially as well. Um, and I, I would see technology as a facilitator of that. Not sure it's going to be the reason why there's more regulation, but I, I'm not actually a technology expert, so I need someone else to comment on that one. Um, and uh, I, I would say certainly in the financial sector, um, financial 
tech companies and um, insurers banks um, are more than likely to see a high level of regulation around use of tech and use of, of solutions because um, they are already quite heavily regulated um, sectors. Regards um, corporate, I mean, partly depends what they're exactly um, doing. I mean, our regulator in, in water is off what, so um, they're more thinking about prices for customers and, and things rather than necessarily technology per se. But um, I think for most corporates where they might see the impact of regulation is around um, the, the testing of controls, for example, as part of your audit and, and what your auditors might be expecting to see and might be expecting to test. And I think that would impact um, all corporates. Um, I suppose the other area of regulation is around cryptocurrencies and where that's going to lead. We've already, already seen China and India um, sort of going negative on those, uh, whether that will um, uh, there'll be any other um, governments that uh, start to um, take action on those, we, we shall see. Great, thank you for that. Um, and, and I think just one final question um, bef before we close this, this session. Um, technology is a key driver of smaller treasury teams. Does this reduce the opportunities to learn the skills of managing teams? And if we are indeed losing this, are there other areas of softer skills that we should learn about? Just opening up the floor to, to the panelists. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take it on for now. Um, I've been part of big and small teams um, and technology is definitely important to both. I think where we are now and probably seeing you even in the Middle East where it's not probably as ahead of the curve as parts of the Western world are, uh, TMSs are being implemented left, right, and center. There's a real focus on automation. There's a real focus on control or on visibility of data. So whether you're a small or big team, it's going to make your life easier, potentially, or complicated, depending on which way, which way you look at it. Um, but in, in, a, in a small team, I think what it does, similar to what we're going through now, is it changes the way people work and it changes kind of uh, things for the better, actually. So whereas without technology, I think everything is very manual. It's very kind of uh, generally laborious around processing of data or payments, whatever it might be. If you can put, have payments going straight through from your ERP to your banks without with very minimal interaction in the middle, uh, that's only going to save time. Is, is there a real value loss for that person who was potentially going to any banking portal, typing it in, et cetera? Um, Probably not, and that person then can focus on actually something a bit more interesting potentially. Uh, I think with the technology and more creating efficiencies, there's, there's obviously going to be an opportunity somewhere for uh, re reducing a headcount potentially, which you don't need as many people, which is obviously the downside. But I, I think also then there's also other jobs created. We mentioned about data scientists before, we about the tech teams that support the treasury. Uh, potentially, with all this data, what do you do with it? You can create new roles. So. Like, like we have, we created a, a data analyst to look at our our uh, future kind of so so one information. Um, so, so for me and everything I've experienced, yes, you could sort of say that technology takes away sort of a bit from the jobs and the skills potentially, but in reality, actually, I think it's just an enabler for people to kind of do bigger and more interesting things. And, and whether that's also so sorry, sorry, I think about the other day actually. They, the, all this automation, all, the, all this risk management has been automated, will actually make our lives easier. It will reduce risk, it will make things uh, less or more secure, it will make the chance of payments going awry or fraud a lot less, but it doesn't mean it won't happen. So people still need to be uh, prepared. So one of the things that, as I mentioned earlier, as, as a key sort of requirement for a treasurer is to be adaptable, to be a problem solver, and in a lot of cases a firefighter actually. So just because we have the technology, and as everyone's mentioned, that we don't want to have a black box, but what comes out of it? How do you deal with uh, information for the positive? What do you do in a situation when something goes wrong? You need to be able to adapt to that, react to it, and, and make sure actually the human touch and the human uh, kind of understanding and is, is related to it. So now I, I think technology is only going to be a good thing for small teams. And Hoi and, and Alison, any final thoughts? 
Um, yeah, so I, 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 I agree that um, technology is a helper for, for, for Treasury. And if you can get um, things automated that, that will help you, that, that's a good thing. I, I don't think it will take away from the career in Treasury. I think that that skill set is very much in demand and it will just mean that the remaining tasks in Treasury will be all the more interesting to do. And, and there's nothing more I can say. I think James and uh, Alison said it no perfectly, so <laughs> I fully agree. That's perfect. Thank you very much. So I think that marks the end of today's session. Um, thank you very much for joining the closing session of the week. I hope you all found it very insightful. And before closing off, I just want to say a special thank you to all of our panelists. Um, you have been very insightful. Um, so thank you again for joining and I wish you all the best. <laughs>